Hey guys, I'm CPL Fever. It's your host, Jack and Andrew Murray here. And today we are joined by former Wanderers player and current Halifax Wanderers goalkeeping coach, Jan Michael Williams. So how are you, Jan? Thank you. Thank you for having me, guys. I'm very excited to, to, to be a part of this. Yeah, it's a, it's a pleasure for us to have you on. <laughs> no, the pleasure is mine. The pleasure is mine. Yeah, you were always one of the one of the guests that we, we really wanted to have on. I think I think partly because you know when uh, in that first year with the Wanderers, you just seemed like such a such a joyful guy, such a happy guy. Um, obviously, you were the captain, and I know there was that one time where um, the last home game, you kind of took uh, I don't know if you remember, but you took Jack around uh, to get some autographs. You kind of yeah, pulled some of the players in. Yeah. 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 So um, um, again, again, I guess for me it was just important to, to, to connect with the community, with the Halifax community. Yeah. Um, Jack was somebody I was familiar with, seeing him around and, and looking at a couple of his the, the things he was doing, um, in terms of interviewing the guys and whatnot, and and just for me to be a part of, of his overall development and his understanding of how professional football works. I mean, I was happy to be a part of that. Yeah. Um... Yeah, you were you really connected greatly with the Halifax community, and we really appreciate it. No, it's easy to connect to connect to the Halifax community. It's 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 a good community to be in. Um, a lot of characters, a lot of individuals, and uh, and generally overall, it's like a a good culture and a good people to be around. Yeah. Uh, so my first question for you is: We ask this to everybody, um, but how did you fall in love with soccer? Whew. That's a good question, but um, I am the youngest of four boys. My mom, um, she made four boys. The oldest, him being a, a police officer now, um, he was actually a goalkeeper. Okay. And he didn't follow the sport long because he was also involved in, in athletics, um, doing the 100 meter and the 200 meter race back home. Um, back in the day, a lot of well, young people growing up, they were always involved in more than, more than one sport. Mm -hmm. So I followed him around a lot. And I also have another brother who was heavily involved in, 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 in football. And he's actually one year older than me. So I followed him around a lot also. And uh, just seeing the joy uh, playing the sport gave to them, uh, for me, it was a no-brainer. It was easy for me to fall in love with it because, I mean, I love my brothers dearly. I still love them dearly, of course, but um, just seeing the love that, that they would, you know, have after coming home or, or being on the field or coming home from a game, it was easy for me to fall in love with it. And and, and, and football being the, by far, let me just say this, without bias, with bias and without bias, um, the best sport on the planet. I mean, what's not to love about it, you know? You can go through all different types of emotions in 90 minutes and, and, and come out with a smile on your face. So it's easy to fall in love with, with football. Yeah, and so, something that I've noticed is um, it, when you're just looking at it from overview and you don't know a lot about tactics, it can look like kind of like the simplest sport, but it's actually the most complex, like with triangles and formations and all these tactics and how some formations come into style now and some are just being not used. It's just such an interesting sport and it's so fun like you said there's is, so many emotions fun. you can feel in 90 minutes yeah and and, and, and definitely and, and for me it's it's even more in depth than that i mean just even trying to understand your opponents the, the the guys you're directly facing in terms of your position and and then to understand teams and and their tactics and so on you know so for me it's very detailed it's it's complex it's but i guess all of that makes it the best sport of the planet. Now, did you? Um, I, can't, I can't disagree with you there. Did you start? Did you play keeper always, or, or did you play other positions? As long as I could remember, I was this height. <laughs> it's funny. Okay. Like, so, you, so you just grew right. up to to six three and stayed there. <laughs> and that was it. Um, when I started playing, I tried every single position, and I was horrible. <laughs> I was awful. I was awful as a centre forward. I was awful as a defender. I was awful as a midfielder. And every time I would go out with with my friends and try to play, they just keep kept on pushing me back into the goal, you know. So eventually, I fell in love with it. I, I guess the height was an advantage, and um, I fell in love with it. Yeah, well, you're certainly a good, a really good keeper. 
<laughs> well, I try. I try my best. <laughs> um, and my next question for you is, who did you model your gameplay after? Ooh, that's a good one. Um, I grew up with the likes of uh, Chiji Buffon mm -hmm. and uh, Ika Casillas. Oh. For me, I was heavy, and I get it. A lot has to do um, with looking at my, my brothers, I think. The one I followed around the most, Keith, he was in love, still is in love with Real Madrid. And Ika Casillas spent a long time there. You know, I kind of enjoyed looking at him play. And my favorite team being Juventus, I followed Buffon for time, you know. Um, him being so consistent over the years, still playing at the age, what, 40, 42 or something. Um, I followed them extensively because I, I really wanted to emulate what, what they were doing in, with their careers, you know. So those would be the two guys I kind of followed the most. Okay, uh, yeah, I, those are both great goalies. And I personally, I, I think Iker Casillas is also my favorite goalie. I loved watching him <laughs> at Real Madrid. Um, so, so yeah, and like you said, Gigi Buffon is, is still at such a high level despite being in his 40s already. Exactly, um, exactly. And could you just expand a bit more on how your family, like, su um, supported your dream to play soccer? Because I know, like, obviously <laughs> your brothers inspired you, um, but... Could you expand on that a little bit? You are asking all the difficult questions tonight, boy. Um, Everyone says that this is a psychology show. I don't see it. Um, but, <laughs> but, so, wow. Yeah, but. <laughs> I literally sit in here sweating right now with this <laughs> um, Up until I was around, what, age 16, 17, my mom... Her dream was to have one of our sons go on to university in the U.S. Um, us coming from Trinidad, that would be extremely expensive without a partial or a full scholarship. Um, and usually back in those times, it was sports scholarships. So my brother, the oldest one, he had an athletic scholarship, which he turned down to stay at home because him being the oldest, he was kind of like the father figure in, in, in the family. And he kind of held that role of being uh, the, the older brother and, and taking care of us. He held it very seriously. Still holds it seriously today, to be honest. Um, so he actually turned down a scholarship, an athletic scholarship to go to the US. And up until that point, I had written uh, the SAT examination and I had the opportunity to go to five or six different universities in the US um, on a full scholarship. A couple of days before, uh, the coach was supposed to send the information and the, the, the flight information for me to go up to the US to attend one of the universities that I had chosen. Um, I had a meeting with a club in Trinidad called W Connection. Um, they wanted to sign me on a professional contract. And I sat in the office, I remember sitting in the office, I think I was at age 17. I sat in the office with my mom and as much as she wanted me to, to make the decision to go to college in the U.S., she told me that it was my decision because she doesn't want or she didn't want to live my life for me. You know, she wanted me to 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 be able to make the, the choice. And she said at that point, she said, I'll support you regardless of what you do, but make sure it's something that you really want, you know, and. Needless to say, I decided to sign my first professional contract with, with W Connection. And, um, and she was there from, from beginning to, to end, you know. Um, she was there. She supported every, every move I'd make. There were times I came home from practice too tired to even move. Um, she was there helping me on. And, 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 and every time I speak about this, I'm always a little bit emotional because I think Sometimes, in, especially in this time, we don't have parents like that again. We don't have much parents like that, especially in the communities I come from, like the black community, where parents tend to, like, you know, neglect children and their needs uh, emotionally, you know. So I'm extremely thankful for having a parent who, through it all, you know, stuck by my side, you know. So I think she was the, or is the, the biggest part to play. She supported me. She was, she was there, you know, times when, 
when games were tough and I came home crying and there she was there. Times when I was there celebrating, she was there, you know. So she she definitely was the biggest part in terms of, of helping me to, to, to achieve what I wanted. Wow, that's a that's a really interesting story. And then and then you go on and, and have eighty caps for like eighty senior caps. For, well, I, for I, I, <laughs> let me give you some bad. information here. I'll, I, I'll give Jack a little bit of homework. So even now, even today, there are some some countries within uh, CONCACAF that are not mm-hmm. FIFA affiliated. When I say that, they can't go up for World Cup qualifiers. But when we play, for instance, the CONCACAF World Cup, they're involved in qualifiers and they could play in the CONCACAF. They could play in the Gold Cup. So French Guyana being one of them, for example. So when they count the caps for the national team, I've played games against French Guyana back in the day against Martinique, Curacao, Guadeloupe, and those caps never counted. So to be honest, I have well over 100 senior appearances for the country. Oh, okay. But the ones that FIFA count as full internationals is actually 81. Right. Yeah. Okay, so well... That's, that's, that's why um, I think the last school couple before you would see players like Maluda, who played with the French national team, go back and play for, for, I think, was it French Guyana or Curacao? One of those countries that he went on to play for. The only reason that's possible is because of the, the mix-up with the countries and, and so on. But, but yeah, I have well over 100 caps with Trinidad as senior men's national team. Wow, I apologize wow. for that. So, so 100 senior caps, um, player of the year in, in 2006, right? Um, yeah, 2006 in the league in, uh, in the domestic competition back home. That mm-hmm. is astounding you know? <laughs> what i could say though is that because i started playing football so young i think i peaked extremely early i did you know at the age 20 21 i was already um a full international for the national team i was already um touring the world going on trials in different clubs and i, I think at that point i already all grew the professional league in Trinidad and tobago so um, I just wanted to get the opportunity to, to, to leave. So every time I would go out in the domestic league to play, I saw myself as an international player. So it has, uh, as, a, as a league game in the English Premier League or a league game in the French division, you know. And I think just looking at the games with that mindset actually helped me to, to push my standard to be a little bit higher than, than the competitors. Yeah, that's yeah. really interesting about, the, about how, you, how you see that, that mindset there. Yeah, and because... like something that reminds me of it is like it's kind of like um, a quote that I really like. Anything that the mind can is- conceive, it can achieve, and exactly. you definitely did that. Yeah. Um, but we do have a mind. We always love to like learn about um, the mindset. Um, so, how do you prepare for a game or a tournament? Is it kind of the same, or is it, re- or is it quite different? Now, every every game I see, I prepare for the same way, regardless if I'm playing against Lionel Messi and, and Argentina in, in Buenos Aires, or if I was playing a normal cup game back at home in Trinidad, um, I would prepare for it the same way. I think the most important thing for, uh, for you to get a consistent level is consistency. You can't prepare for games differently and expect to have the same level of performance. Mm-hmm. You know, so you have to prepare for each game as if it was a final in a World Cup, you know? Yeah. And you have to find that flow, that, that rhythm, that, that, that vibe within yourself to be able to, to stay as calm as possible, but to hype yourself up, up just enough to be able to, 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 to get the proper mix and going on to, onto the pitch. So yeah, for so me, it was, it was important to just maintain that, that consistent level even in the practice, even in the even in the training games, to make sure that when I, I go on the pitch, regardless of who I'm about to face, it's the same level, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Consistency and balance. Yes, exactly. And is that one of the reasons you saw yourself as, as let's say, outgrowing that league? Uh, because other players didn't really, like you didn't see them, you didn't see them holding themselves to that that same high standard that you were well, holding yourself I mean, to? I can't, speak, I can't speak for other players. I could only speak for myself and my ambition. Um, I think to win everything there was to win in the local competition, then essentially it's like out oh, growing the league. You're not going to play, let's just say, uh, Mario Brothers, for example. 
like you play and you finish the last stage. You're not going to start over and play from the top to play again. You look to try to, to play another level you know, or another game. You know, mm -hmm. so for me, that that's what it was. It was a, the opportunity to, to play in the league, to be the best in the league, to, to win everything that was to win in the league, and then to move on. You know, so I just kind of, my main ambition when I was younger was to get outside and to play at the highest level. And um, as much as I tried to achieve it, I mean, it didn't come true in the end, but it was always my ambition. And I think um, if the other players in the league didn't have that that mindset and that mentality, then they, they would not have been able to compete with me in that time. Uh -huh. So what made you such a such a dominant keeper? Is it is it the reflexes? Is it the ability to to read the game? Is it the is it the communication and the and the leadership and the organizing? What do you think your, your best strength is? Um, I think, whew, I, I honestly don't think I had a weakness to be fair. <laughs> I don't think I had a um, It's funny, I sat with, I sat with Akeem and Rampa Sad yesterday and I was just telling them, like, no, this period here is when they need to work on everything that they see in their game that's weak. And we were talking about the past and me in the past. And I would use this period now. So the, the league is done. You have some time on your hands. If you know your, your distribution is not the best, you work on it. If you know your, 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 your attacking space is not the best, you're not, your acceleration is not the best, you work on it. And that is what I, I did when I played. I, I, I looked at the, the aspects of my game that I thought were the best, and I worked on it until it was more than satisfactory. You know, so... I think back in the day, I just had the entire package. For me, communication was easy because I'm somebody who's very vocal and, 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 yes. and, and I could communicate with, with people, you know? And um, everything else was just basic things you have to work on, you know, your distribution, your passing, your, your reflexives, you know? Mm -hmm. So I, I didn't see much of a weakness. I think one of the weaknesses for me it was that I didn't like to rest. I was always working and sometimes I would overwork myself to the point that I was too tired to even participate in the practice or to do well in games. So it was difficult for me to find the balance of wanting to improve but not getting the, the, the significant amount of rest, you know? Yeah, and speaking of uh, rest, um, I know you've had some trials with some pretty big clubs like Sheffield United and Rangers. So um, when you know you have a trial with any club or a big club, uh, do you rest more or do you train more? <laughs> I just go into the trial and try to get it done. Um, for me, the preparation is what you do in the practice and what you do in the games. And then when you get to the trial, it's easy. Uh, when I, the first time, I'll never forget, the first time I went to Sheffield, mm -hmm. on the second day of practice, on the second day of preseason practice, I remember going into... The coach at that time was Neil Warnock, if I'm not mistaken. I remember the second day I practiced, the goalkeeping coach came and he was like, you don't even need to do any more. We, we definitely offer any our contract. And I was surprised. And he was just like, yeah, you're doing everything, if not better than what we have here. You know what I mean? And he even asked me if I was from the Caribbean. He's like, are you sure you're from the Caribbean? And I'm like, yes. <laughs> the difference, as I said, the, the difference with me was that I worked and I worked and I worked and I on technical things and tactical things like I worked. So I knew that any level of football that I had to go to, I was ready because I prepared for it. I didn't prepare for the Caribbean standard or for the Trinidadian standard. I prepared for the international standard. So I was never afraid of going into I just went into trials as, as normal. Um, actually, the only team that I, I was not offered a, a contract in was Rangers because they weren't prepared to to sign myself and Kenwin Jones at that age, but they just offered us the, the trial for the, for the trial sake. But every other club I've went to in, in England and in Europe, I've, mm -hmm. I've been offered that contract. And it's, if not for the situation in England, which being the work permit, I would have been playing in England years. Yeah, wow. so so what happened there with, with Sheffield? Was that when they were in the in the Premier League? or, or I've, been in, to, uh... I've been to Sheffield for, for three consecutive summers. Um... Mm -hmm. One being with Neil Warnock, or two being with Neil Warnock, and the third being with, was it Brian Robson? I think it was Brian Robson. And each time I was offered a contract, each time we, 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 we tried to get a work permit, and there was always an issue. Um, the third time we went, 
they took the, uh, the, the appeal and they took it to, to the board. And I don't know who was upset that morning, but they voted 3-4 and 3 again. So still out. <laughs> I was still unfortunate not to get the work permit. Um, it was always an issue. Uh, part of it being not playing enough competitive international games. Uh, part of it being Trinidad and Tobago being outside the top uh, 80. Because your team has to be... The requirements for the work permit is that your, your country has to be in the top 80 in terms of the FIFA ranking. Oh, the FIFA ranking. Right. And then you as an individual have to play more than 75% of your country's national team's games for the previous two years of the application for the work permit. That seems and very difficult. And how old were you at that time? How old were you at that time? I was, what, I think I started going to, to England at age 21 or 20, I can't remember, 21, 22, 23. So, and I went for three consecutive summers, and each time I, I, I missed out, you know? Um, yeah. But that seems that seems really annoying because I, I mean obviously I, you you would have had the the caps right mm -hmm. so it's really the just the first time I went I didn't have the caps okay because it wasn't seventy five percent of the games it was seventy five percent of the competitive games so for instance if your country would have played let's just say two World Cup qualifiers or four World Cup qualifiers for the year mm -hmm. if I participated in two then I fell short because I would have had to participate in one more for to make the, the minimum requirement of seventy five percent. You know, so it was it was a very tricky situation. And the third time I went, we we lost uh, I think we lost the Bermuda at home, and then we went to Bermuda where we won. And just before we made the application for the for the for the work permit, Trinidad actually jumped to a hundred and one or hundred and seven or something like that. In the FIFA rankings, and and they were like, no way, there's no way you could you could get the, the permit because of that. So it was tough, it was difficult, but um, I guess that's how it goes sometimes, you know. All right, yeah, and where did the, you go the from there? FIFA rankings are. I feel like the FIFA rankings are kind of well, they're arbitrary. Uh, <laughs> kind of unfair because like it's the whole term, like every all the clubs, uh, like every competitive games, and that's not like when the time that you were playing or the last decade, it's like since they had a national team, I believe. Or yeah, the national team. Um, I, 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 you know, FIFA does their thing and sometimes they can't question it. They, certain things have to change and certain things have to remain the same, but yeah. I guess we knew what the requirements were before we went into the situation. So um, it would have always been tough to, to, to get through with the work permit. Um, mm -hmm. the, the good thing is I always try to look at the bright side. Had I probably been playing in England, I, I wouldn't have been on this call with you all tonight. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> good. Um, well, let's go to maybe a brighter topic and talk about um, some of your past clubs, uh, one of them being White Star. Wool Woolway. Yeah. Woolway. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Woolway. Um, Sometimes I can't pronounce that. <laughs> that was... That was the doing of Sheffield United. They they held me on, and I was one of their feeder clubs from Belgium. So they actually held me on, and they sent me to that club um, to play in Bel to play in Belgium to stay within the European circuit to try to to get a, a European passport. Now with the European passport, it's, the, it's easier to get the work permit to play in England. So that was one of their feeder clubs, and when they are, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, had the opportunity to, to to play, you know, European football, to 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 play amongst different players from different countries with different styles, and 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 I think that really helped with my development as a as a goalkeeper, you know. So I was really grateful for that opportunity. Yeah. Um, How was the style yeah. of play different when you when you went? Oh, um, it was very technical. I could tell you that. I think they they. they the league itself, all the teams in the league held on to the ball more. They tried to move it around. Not too much long balls. It was it was very technical, very technical players. Um, in terms of, there wasn't much athleticism, like players with, with good speed, jumping ability, that type of thing. But the technical aspects of, of the game, they had they had that on point. Yeah, um, I just had a quick question for that. So, obviously, you said that... Um that they were very technical, but some like, and not a lot of long balls. 
Well, what I'm trying to ask is, what was the technical level like? How how did it compare? Um. Well, you see, the thing with with with, with football is, you could. Football is football. If if you somebody decides to play a, a longer type game, trying to get balls into the box, trying to force the opposition into errors, or somebody tries to play a more technical game, try to put the ball down and play. At the end of the day, it's all about the result. You know, there's there's two ways to, to get up onto the third floor. You could actually walk up the steps, or you could take the elevator. Now, at the end of the day, the result is to get up to the third floor. You know, so. I, I tend not to, to focus too much on the on the different styles of play. I mean, as long as it's within the rules of the game, and as long as it, 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 it is enjoyable, it's nice to look at, you see at the end of the day what the other team's trying to do. And at the end of the day, the result will take care of itself, you know? Okay. And then what, what happened after after that? Where'd you go after after Belgium? Ah, I went back to Sheffield in the summer after that, offered a contract again. And ended up in Ferenc Varos. Congratulations to them. They qualified for the Champions League. Uh, they in, they in the group with, whew, with Juventus and, uh, <laughs> and Barcelona. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, went to, to Ferenc Varos. Had an amazing time. Um, I'll tell you why. Because I learned a lot about life. Um, it was an absolute shocker for me. Um, it was a shocker. It was a shocker. Needless to say, in Eastern European at that time, there were not a lot of black people. There wasn't much. Um, I lived in Budapest, which is one of the best cities in the world. Very, oh my gosh, it's amazing. The architecture, the just being able to see the new, which is the river that separates Buda and Pest. It was a, it was a good experience for me. It helped me. It opened my eyes a lot in terms of what the real world is like, you know. Um, it gave me the gift that I have now, which is being able to to, to really read people's body language. Because oh. at that time, Rosetta Stone wasn't even teaching a Hungarian the language it is. <laughs> so it was difficult to communicate. Wow. And yeah, I had to read the body language of people I had to pick up on. And certain things, certain movements, certain gestures, and and yeah, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it for what it was. Um, I played. Um, I can't remember how many league games I played. It was quite a few. And then, as soon as we were we, we won the championship, mathematically, the coach was like, "Well." <laughs> You, you, you did what we what you came here to do. I, I can't even remember staying back for the celebrations because the coach was like, you know, if you want to leave for, to go back to your country, you could leave, you know. And um, I, I guess for what it was, it was a good experience, as I say. I enjoyed it. Um, it's hard for me not to enjoy anything, to be honest, because I always try to take the positives out of everything. So I enjoyed it, and um, I was really excited, and I, I was really happy for the experience, I should say. Yeah, the, this experience sounds like a fun one, and I do, and I do think you're very optimistic. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, and um, I wanted to talk a little bit about the Wanderers because um, I know you've just you played there recently, um, and it's in, and you were the the club's first ever captain in an entirely new league, so. Why did you choose to like go to a completely new league, and how did it feel to get the captain's armband? Um, Stephen Hart, Stephen Hart, Stephen Hart. Um, <laughs> I'll tell you what: a lot of people would have seen last year because of the position in the league we finished and so on. They may have seen it as the team didn't do well. And for me, I think one of the most successful clubs last season was the Halifax Wanderers. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you why. To start from scratch, from zero, with 22, 23 into, in different players, bringing them into a group, into an organization, having them play together for the first time, having them trying to mesh, trying to 
to blend different styles, different cultures, and trying to find or trying to, to, to develop that, that, uh, that, that, what was the word I'm looking for? To Can develop that identity. Oh, okay. I think we were very successful in that. Now, if you look at other teams, for example, the, 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 the Calgary, they would have had the foothills from before. You know, the, a lot of these clubs, Edmonton, they had a, a structure, they had things put in place from before. Halifax Wanderers had to start from zero. So as soon as I got the call from Stephen Hart and he told me about the project, because I mean, it is, it was a project. Mm -hmm. I was excited to be a part of it because I knew the work that uh, we would have to do to be able to develop what is now, you're seeing, you're seeing the fruits of what would have happened last year, what is now one of the most formidable teams in the league. You know, okay. and I was excited from the time I got the phone call. I was excited. I said, you know what, I'll, I'll be there. I'm coming in to, to, to help, to be a part of. And yeah, I was very excited to, 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 to come in and help and be a part of that because that project for me was, was I, I, like, I, like, I like challenges, you know, and it was a challenge I wanted to take up. And, and I'm glad um, everything turned out actually the way it did. Mm -hmm. So, did you know Stephen Hart um, from before? Yeah, Stephen Hart coached the Trinidad national team in its best period in the last decade. Yeah. Um, he took us to two consecutive um, quarterfinal places in the in the Gold Cup. Uh, he took us to the highest ever. I think we were in the FIFA rankings, which was in the thirties or the forties. Wow, he, he was amazing. Stephen Hart was amazing with the national team. You know, um, he, he definitely, he, he, he revitalized Trinidad and Tobago football. And it, it, back home, he is an icon. He's a legend back home because people love him. Obviously, him being such a, a good person in any case. But he, he, he from the time we, we, we met and we made that connection and we started talking and, and you know, I started working with him with the national team. I, I, I knew he could get me to do almost anything, you know. So, as I said, from the time I heard the phone, I heard him on the, the other line of the phone call, I was like, yeah, anything you want me to do. Yeah, it's, it sounds like he was really successful with um, Trinidad and Tobago. And it's yeah. amazing that he's been able to coach two national teams. Yeah, um, I actually played against him. I remember we had, um, I was discussing with this with him this recently, we played against Canada in a friendly in Miami, if I'm not mistaken, 2011 mm. or 2012 or something like that. Um, yeah, we played, I played against him. That was the literal first time I met him. He was the, the mm. coach of the, the, the Canadian national team, and I was the captain of Trinidad's national team. I, I shook hands with him. I spoke to him for a little bit. And, and yeah, I was surprised that he was a Trinidadian, like Trinidad, Trinidadian, Trinidad accent, everything. So yeah, a very good guy. Yeah. He's he's very nice because I think I really I I like the first time that I really talked talked to him was mm -hmm. just at like Dury Nellie's and it was and it's and it's great to see, and it's and he's just so nice and everyone at the whole organization is so nice. Yeah. It's a great well, organized like club. Yeah, I think I think what what the club and I, and I told some of the guys this at the end of last season and I told the guys this at the beginning of this season what the organization was missing was the run we put on in, in, in PEI. That is the only thing that was missing. You know, they, from Derek Martin to, to, to Matt Fegan, you know, Dr. Green at the top, everybody did their, their part to make sure, to ensure that they made it as easy as possible for us to, 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 to put out the kind of performance we put out in, in, in PEI, you know. Um, the organization has run really well. And, 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 and again, you'll see the fruits of that. You saw the fruits of that in PEI, and you'll see the fruits of that next year and, and moving forward because we have a group of people that want to be successful. We have a group of people that know how to be successful. So it's just for us to kind of just push that onto the players and get them to, to kind of get things going. Yeah, I'm excited. Um, I'm, ex I'm very excited to see next year because I know going into this tournament, Stephen Hart had said, like, it's a build-up. 2021 is really going to be our year. But mm -hmm. really, 2020 was an amazing year for them. They made it to the finals. And if and they beat 
they should have been forged twice. Some bad um, calls, but at at the like we could we could have won. We could have won. It was close. Let's, let, let's not talk about the referee and let's leave them out of this. I think they, they got okay. back to that already. So okay, <laughs> but yeah. but before we before we knock out the referees, I just want to ask you about that call in the box, Jason Bill Bill Yo. I, I have trouble no pronouncing that. Yeah, so I will send you. So he I comes will send out. You, yeah. Let me just tell you. I will send you a clip from the 2014 World Cup final, or you could you could look it up online. Manuel Neuer versus Gonzalo Higuain. That's all, and I'll leave that right there. Okay. That's all okay. I have to say about that. Okay. okay. Case closed. Yes. You just type it in on Google. Manuel Neuer. Versus Gonzalo Higuain, 2014 World Cup final. Just type yeah. it in. It's, it's like it's okay. like 15 seconds long, and okay. then okay. And then you could do it with that information. You could do anything you like after that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so what was it like? Um, you know, at the Island Games, that was your first tournament as as a coach. Obviously, you you've been in in lots of tournaments before, but it was a very unique tournament in a lot of ways. Um, not the least of which was, you know, was very compressed and obviously tough on the, on the players. You know what I mean? It really, it really was uh, physically demanding in a way that, that a lot of tournaments, you know, might not be quite that, that physically demanding. What was it like to, to kind of experience that from the coach's side rather than, you know, being the uh, captain? Uh, to be honest, I, I was just soaking as much information as I could soak from, from, from Stephen and, and from Mazout. You know, um, they, I think they dealt with everything well. And it was there to see. They, 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 they dealt with rotating the squad well. They, they dealt with player load and management well in terms of the training, in terms of the rest. Um, and for me, I was just soaking up everything from the coaching aspect of it. Obviously, I, I lent my little, uh, knowledge and experience when it was needed. But for me, it was a very good opportunity to learn from Stephen Hart being probably, in my opinion, the best or, or one of the best coaches in the league. Definitely the most experienced. And, and even learning from Mizzoud. So I, I learned so many things from Mizzoud, to be honest, that I, 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 I didn't even know before, you know, or, or I would have overlooked before in terms of how you manage players, how you, how you even interact and speak and, and deal with some of these Canadian players and, and deal with some of the international ones and, and for me, it was a very good learning experience. It was the toughest, I'll say. Because nobody can ever say they've been in a situation like that before. Being in a situation in the bubble, not being able to leave the hotel. You know, things like that. Having yeah. been tested every three to four days. So, as I said, I learned so much within that, that, that period of time that will last or, or that will stay with me for forever, actually. And I, I'm very grateful for that. Yeah, and could you just expand a bit more on what it was like to transition from a player and to a coach? To a coach? Yeah, I, the, the transition wasn't hard, to be honest, because even when I played, I was always doing my, my coaching licensing and certificates and trying to get a proper, you know, certification. I considered, I considered myself when I played a student at the game, and I'm still a student at the game now. So I was always trying to learn so that I could pass good knowledge and good information on because. Everybody's in this game for a short period of time and everybody's just yeah. in this to, 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 to experience it and then just to pass it on. So I, I, I took that very seriously when I was a, a player and as a coach, I have a bigger responsibility to pass that information and that knowledge on. So the transition for me, it, 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 it wasn't that difficult at all. Yeah, I okay. was going to say it, it kind of looks like, you know, the way that you kind of absorbed everything as a player, now you're, you're, you're kind of absorbing everything and and try to learn as much as you can to uh, to become the best coach that you can. I definitely want to, to sit in a chair and, and, and look at the side of me and see who's a Mourinho or, or, or Pep Guardiola or, or Hans Flick next to me. You know, I really want to, to, to be the best. You know, I want to improve my knowledge, my information and my application of what I've learned as a coach against the best in the world. So for me, it's always about improvement. Mm -hmm. So and are you I, visualizing like right now, like you're, you're, you see Jose Mourinho getting upset and storming down the tunnel because, you know, your team just scored on him? <laughs> well, 
I would love, I would love to get an opportunity to be honest. I would really love to get an opportunity. And, and again, I, I always believe in, in trying to aim for the stars, you know, and if you, if you fall short, you fall in the clouds, you know, so I, definitely, as I said before, I want to see the likes of Pep Guardiola. I want to see the, 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 the likes of Jurgen Klopp on the touchline beside me, you know, and, and that's when I'll know, and that's when I know I'm, I've gotten to that level. Yeah, and I just want to ask you something because I know you just mentioned Hansi, Hansi Flick, um, the head, the current head coach of Bayern Munich, I believe. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know that um, Bayern Munich are like in a very dominant state right now. But why did, why have you like mentioned him? Because I know like a lot of people will just mention like Jose Mourinho or um, or uh, Pep Guardiola, Jurgen Klopp. So what stands out? What um, does Hansi Flick do that stands out to you? He, that's an easy one. He wins. <laughs> he wins. <laughs> he come. He came into into to Bayern Munich. They were struggling in the league. They've won yeah. the league now. They've won the, the the Super Cup. They've won the German Cup. They've won the Champions League. He continues to win. So definitely, he has to be doing something right with the group that he has. You know. So so he has to be up there with the, with the Jurgen Klopp's and the and the Mourinho's and the Guardiola's of this world. So his name has to be mentioned. Mm-hmm. And he and you're right. He did come into a Bayern Munich team that was struggling, and now he's shaped it into like, um, like back to their glory days. I'm not sure if he's quite Pep Guardiola level with Bayern Munich, but definitely around that. Well, I would say I would say that he's past Pep Guardiola level with Bayern Munich because Guardiola didn't win the Champions League with Bayern Munich, and he's yes, only come in for, for some months and he's already won the Champions League. So sorry, Pep. I know if you're listening to me right now, I'm sorry, but I have to take hands flick over you right now. <laughs> um, okay, and uh, um, I just also wanted to ask you. When I saw you again a couple of days ago, you were wearing lava beads. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. So, how long have you been wearing lava beads? How did you um, like them? What scents do you like? And what are your favorite patterns and designs? Wow. Wow. Very, very, very detailed. Um, I used to wear the, the chains, the gold and the, and the silver chains back in the day. And apart from them being expensive, <laughs> which is the obvious, I don't think it, it, it kind of represents or I don't like what to me it signifies. I think it's a mockery. This is just my personal opinion. Um, back in the days of slavery, we, we fought, black people fought to be out of chains. You know? Mm. And I think it's a kind of mockery for us to... to, to put ourselves back into them, you know? Um, I like the beads. I like some of, of the beads, what they signify, what they represent. Some of them are like medical purposes, some of them. Um, the designs are more tribal and, and they can connect to, to some parts of African culture. And I just try to sometimes just stay in touch with that, you know? So for me, I know it's not, it's not what the in thing is no, but I like them and, and, and it's an individual choice and preference and I just yeah. I just prefer. Them. Yeah, how long have yeah. you been wearing them for? Poof, a time. I, I think when I started to, to to question things, so when I was eighteen, nineteen, and I started to question everything, like everything, everything, everything I would question, you know. And the more knowledge and information I got about about chains and. and that's, it just kind of turned me off, you know, and and as I say, the, the beads kind of connect to, to certain tribes and to certain cultures and not necessarily African culture, but different cultures as well. So I kind of go for that more than anything else. Yeah, the we, we just got ours like earlier um, a couple like a couple of weeks ago and we've been really like them. I'm wearing a howl light right now. I'm not sure if you can Whoa, see it. Whoa, that's nice. Howl. That's actually nice. That's nice. That's nice. I have one of those though. I do have one of those oh. with some uh, um, with some cat eye beads, a black and white. Okay. It's, it's kind of exactly like that actually. Yeah, I like the contrast between black and white. Um, but I wanted to go to Black Lives Matter for um, a 
for a bit, little bit and ask you how happy are you that the CPL has shown, shown such a strong stand on the Black Lives Matter movement with um, players kneeling before the games and that big testament with all of the players standing on the sideline and like um, and and showing their support for the Black Lives Matter movement. Um, I, I like that. I, I think what I can say about my time in Canada mm -hmm. is that Canadian people are genuine. And I love that about Canadian people. Um, I've been to almost every country on the planet. I've been to loads of different countries. <laughs> and what I love the most about what I love about Canada is that they they are one of the most genuine people I've interacted with. And the CPL obviously being run by Canadians, I, I expected something like that. You know, I expected for them to to some of them maybe they don't even understand the depth of what black people have been going through. But they show that they showed that solidarity and I, I expected that and I was I was very happy. Like my heart felt warm when I saw the, the, the gesture, you know, and it just goes to, to show sometimes, you know, you, you, yes, people may need to be a little bit more educated and, and may need to understand the struggles of, that black people go through. But even without that, that knowledge, if you see somebody hurting, the best thing to do is to help, you know, and, mm -hmm. and, and I really, I really love that, that, that show of solidarity from, from the CPR. Yeah, it was one of my favorite moments of the tournament. Uh, just the the whole league coming together and showing their stance on the Black Lives Matter movement. I thought it was very powerful and very moving. Yeah, you said that was one of your favorite moments. Clearly, you didn't see Omar's goal against um, <laughs> in the 89th minute. Clearly, you missed that one. <laughs> yeah, those, those, are, those two are my two favorites. Yeah, I'm yeah, so happy there. Like, Wow. We really do have the salvage time magic. <laughs> yep, yeah, yeah. That was whew, my pause. It, it, it goosebumps right now. Wow, that was it. That was it for me. <laughs> yeah. Um, and as a player, did you follow a specific diet? Um. Yes. You know, who was I having this conversation with? Like, uh, who was I having this conversation? I can't remember if it was Mazut. And I was telling him, like, I, I mean, I'm, I know I'm young and, I, and I goalkeepers tend to go on a little bit longer. But having started playing professionally at the age of 17, so for literally half of my life I've been playing professional football, mm -hmm. I just wanted to be able to order KFC when I want. I just wanted to be able to, <laughs> to have a pizza when I want, you know what I mean? I was just so tired of eating the right foods all the time, drinking the right things all the time. It, it was tiring for me, you know? So when I played, I, you know, I had to, to, to make sure my carb intake was correct, make sure I didn't need too much oily food, make sure I didn't drink the, the fizz and the pop, and, and not necessarily specifically a diet, but things that I knew to stay away from and things that I knew were beneficial to me to, to, to be able to achieve optimal performance. So, so now that I've retired, oof, like I know... The, the KFC, like they know I have it on, on my phone, on the app, I have the, pizza, <laughs> I have, I have the Domino's app, I'm like, sorry, I have to, I have to enjoy it at some point in life, you know? But, uh, yeah, yeah but so, so what would you, what would you measure yourself against? Like, w would you be trying to hit a certain body percentage? Like, uh, yeah, different like, things, and then, and then if it started to... percentage, your weight, okay. um, the body fat percentage being important for the goalkeepers, because you're, you're not meant to be as lean as everybody else, you have to have a little something on. But you want to be able to, to 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 be slender enough to move around to make sure it doesn't affect your agility and so on. So, yeah, it's oh, something really? I took very seriously when I played. I never knew that you, that they they specifically needed to have a bit more. Is that because of all the following that you do? Of all, yes, of all the contact with the ground and so on, and, and, and you don't want to be going up for them crossbars and people just bumping you around in the air and so on. So, yeah, it's oh, it was a lot, but. We as I said, I'm glad, I'm glad I don't really have to deal with it so seriously now. Would you say that goalies had to eat more healthy because of all the contact that um, they would do on like corner kicks and free kicks and just like having to punch the ball away or like catching it? I think 
I think I had a coach in Trinidad. He used to always say, you're a human being first. You're an athlete after. And then you're a, a, a football player. And within football, you have the different positions. I think what he meant when he said he, you have to be an athlete sec second is that athletes take care of their body in a certain way. They okay. eat a certain way. They rest a certain way. They exercise a certain way. You can't consider yourself an athlete and and you you're, you're five feet t five foot tall and and you're weighing three hundred pounds. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. You have to be able to 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 have a certain a certain body fat percentage, a certain weight, a certain you know. So, in terms of what you're asking, I just feel like regardless of the position you play, you have to eat healthy. You have to make sure you you you, you, you have enough protein. You have enough carbs. You know so. I think it's just important to to, 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 to to have a proper diet, to have be eating the proper things, not necessarily better or less better than somebody else positioned up. Okay. And um, I was just talking about how, um, like, in corner kicks and um, free kicks, you have to, like, go and punch for the ball. So how do you decide that how the marking will happen? Ooh. He's going into tactics now, boy. I need to call Stephen Hart, boy. <laughs> Every team does it differently. Some, some, some people uh, do man-to-man -man marking. Some teams do zonal marking. And some teams do a mix, which is we put uh, two or three players in a zone, and then everybody else man marks. Um, I won't go further than that. So in case Tommy or somebody else is watching and they're trying to figure out how we de defend so well on them set pieces, um, but yeah, it's 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 yeah. it's, a, it's a combination of different things. So zona would be like okay. if you if you man mark but you have someone on the on the back post and no no zona is actually like nobody's man marking and you just stand in certain parts of the box and attack the ball. You don't even have to focus on 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 the on the opposition um, players because you just focused on the ball and you attack in a certain zone or a certain area. So. Um, for instance, you look at teams like Arsenal, for example, they, they, they zone mark every time for the corners and, and side free kicks. And they're just focused on the ball and the area in which they know that they have to defend. You know? So, so yeah. Yeah. It's like that. And um, I just wanted to say something to your point. Like, some something that I found funny on man marking die showed it to me was I can't remember what MLS team it was, but they were all man marking and someone got around their like the opposition team got around their marker and basically he just ran through the entire team because the whole team was scared to press and they just want to man mark their own guy. Yeah. Well, that's for them to figure out. <laughs> hopefully hopefully Alifax doesn't do that. Yeah, no, it was, it was San Diego. One of the, one of the guys, I think, uh, Aldemar, I think his name is, he, he, he does, he's obsessed with zonal marking all over the field. I mean, man-to-man -man marking all over the field. They just chase each other. So, um, interesting. But, so, so I was curious. Um, let's get back to, to, to your career. Have you ever scored a goal in, in a penalty kick or in open play? Ooh. Two goals. One with W connection. Mm -hmm. I was young that time. We were playing in the semifinal of then we call that tournament the Toyota Classics, I think, or the Pro Bowl, one of the two, I can't remember. And we played a team called United Pressure Training. They scored on us in the 87th minute, and the score was 1 0. And mm -hmm. the 93rd, 94th minute, last corner, the game had decided to go up. Um, this was the year after I won the player of the year in okay. And the ball crossed, and I'd seen it, and I'd, I'd seen that, and I was. In my mind, I remember it was moving in slow motion. I was like, this ball is coming to me. And I kept saying, this ball is coming to me. And I kept saying, just head down. That's what they do when they get it, head the ball down into the ground. And literally, I just jumped up. I headed it down into the ground. It bounced and it bounced up into the net. Celebrations. We went on to win the penalty kicks, I think, 3-0. So that was, that was the first goal or the only goal I scored in terms of regular play. Wow, then, that's, uh, that's incredible. Uh, with, with Central FC, mm -hmm. um, which was the last professional team I played with back home, we were in the final of a knockout competition. I think it was the FA. No, it wasn't the final, the semi-final. 
And I remember saving three penalty kicks in this game, in this penalty shootout, and we still wouldn't win. And every time, like, every time I saved a ball, one of my teammates would come up and kick the ball wide or kick it over the back. <laughs> so we went, to like the, we went to like the eighth penalty kick. And this guy ran up to kick and he skied his over the back. And then somebody else was coming in and I was like, no more. <laughs> I just went and picked up the ball and placed it on the penalty spot. I took the penalty and I hit it in. Because I was so frustrated. I was like, why am I keep, like, why do I keep saving penalties and y'all are not scoring? So I remember doing that. Um, after I scored, I could remember going straight to their goalkeeper because he had an outstanding goal. And I was like, buddy, I'm sorry, but that's how it goes sometimes. You know, continue doing your thing and I hope you're... you're successful next time around because I always like to show that that that, that sportsmanship and that compassion yeah. towards my teammates, you know, towards my opponents. And yeah, yeah, that was that was it. Yeah yeah, sportsmanship is such a great um part of soccer. And it's always so nice to see a good like play of sports like a like a um, like just a such a nice sportsmanship moment. <laughs> we have to remember at the end of the day, I mean we're, we're competitors on the field, but outside the field, we're all human, you know? So okay. we have to remember to always always show that, that that level of sportsmanship. Yeah, and it's getting towards the hour. So I just wanted to ask you two um, more quick questions, and then I wanted to go into a really quick rapid fire. Um, so what advice do you have for young keepers trying to go pro? Young goalkeepers trying to go pro. Don't, don't go pro. No, 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 You know what's the best thing about goalkeeping? <laughs> the absolute best thing about being a goalkeeper. You know as long as you start in a game, it is highly unlikely that you'll be substituted. Yeah. Does it? <laughs> Does it? Does it? Um... We live in a time and now where, and and to be fair, back in the day it was worse, but it's still kind of prevalent now. Where when the goal, if a goal, sorry, if the team concedes a goal, the first person they look at is the goalkeeper, which is unfortunate because there's so many different things that go wrong before it ends up into mm-hmm. that. Um, it's 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 a pressure situation. You're always under pressure. Um, when I coach young kids, I always tell them you have to be mentally strong because it's easy to crack because everybody is is always on new. You know what I mean? It's it's, it's difficult for you to make a mistake and, and 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 look around for some sort of support or cover behind because you're the last line of defense, essentially. But I mean, it's a fun position. I love pressure pressure situations. I love to be in situations where I know my teammates looking at me to be able to pull them out. And if you know you're the type of individual that 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 that, that tr- tries for things like that to, to be able to to be the one to pull your teammates out, to be able to be the one to help your team win, then go for it because it's very fulfilling in the end. Um you get a different uniform from everybody else, which is all awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and um yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I like it. I really like I, I love goalkeeping actually. Um, it helps to develop you as an individual. It helps to develop your your mindset, your mentality as a human being. Mm-hmm. You know, it helps to strengthen you. And 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 as I said before, I think it's a very fulfilling position. Okay. Right. So the number two, um, number number one and two benefits are you don't get substituted and you get to wear a different color. <laughs> Everything else that's that's secondary. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Just and just, ha- just had to clarify if, that. And also that if you're the player that likes to pull um your your like team out of a hole, keeper is a great position. Right, um, and you're right, it's extremely unlikely um if that you're gonna get substituted. Uh e- even though the one time I can think about that's kind of funny, that even though the coach Maurizio, sorry, wanted Kevin to come up, um, and that yeah, penalty. 
<laughs> exactly, exactly. And don't do what Kepa did. My advice yeah. to young kids wanting to go into this sport, do not do what Kepa did. If your coach wants you to come off, just come off. <laughs> yeah, I don't like I don't like Kepa um, that that much um, because of that. But I he is a, he does play in the top flight of England, so you do have to respect him. Um, but so what? What advice do you have for young kids trying to go pro in any position? Ah, football is, is, is the best planet. It's the best sport on the planet. So just do it. Just do it. Don't don't have regrets. Don't have doubts. Just put your best foot forward every single time and just go for it. At the end of the day, I always tell my players, I always tell my teammates, I always know that I'm coaching, I always tell the players, enjoy it. It's not coming back. Enjoy yeah. it. Enjoy the emotion. Enjoy the highs. Enjoy the lose and everything in between, because these times are times you won't get back. And the best part of football is to play. That's the best part. When you play and you're out of that pitch and you get to challenge yourself with against top opposition and you get to play with your teammates and you see that 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 support you get from them, that passion that that you all share to try to get the results. Those things you never get back, and it's so enjoyable at the end of the day. So, if it was easy. I always tell people, if football was easy, then everybody would be playing football, but it's not. <laughs> but at the end of the day, it's fulfilling, you know? You see people you see people going to work on a Monday and people are down and sad and they have memes Monday mornings are the worst, blah, blah, blah. Not for professional footballers. Monday mornings are, are great because you get to come out of the house and you get to go to do what you love. Yeah. Uh, great advice. And now, Dave, you have one more question at... Do you have one more question? No, let's get, let's do okay. the, the rapid fire. So this rapid fire is pretty quick. Um, it's it it's one word answers, and people say that this is the hardest part. It's this it's wow. the main part of the second. <laughs> <episode. laughs> this but, is my um, part, then. I'm ready. I'm ready. This is my but, part. I love um, the hardest part. But uh, I don't think it's too too hard. But it's but it's a lot of fun. So my first rapid fire question for you is: Do you play FIFA? No. Okay, um, and what's your favorite drill? Is it the one that you put on the One Soccer's broadcast? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, who's one famous person um, currently that you've played with or against? Who's the most famous person that you've played with or against um, now? Messi. Messi. Okay, so did, did you... Did, um, did he score on you? Ah, uh, he hit the post, but he didn't score. <laughs> nice. That, was, that had nothing to do with me. That had everything to do with the marvelous defense I had in front of me that day. Well, um, still, you can keep you can keep that um, record. And did you like um, say hi to Messi or something after the game? Um, I mean, yeah. I'm never. To be honest, I'm not the type to be like overawed by by people. You know, I mean, Messi is one of the greatest, if not the greatest, that 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 has ever played. But I just saw him as messy and, and to be aware that when the ball goes on his left foot, to be ready, you know? So <laughs> that was it for me. Okay. And what's your uh, favorite food? Ooh. Whoa. <laughs> whoa. <laughs> and you it's can't say KFC. Question. We're not, we're not going to take KFC as an answer. That's a good, not KFC, Trinidad food, but I'll have to say roti. Trinidad roti, probably dal puri. Um, yeah, probably dal puri. I just realized that the missus could make dal puri a little bit, so probably that. Okay. Um, and what's your favorite fruit? Ooh, mangoes. Julie mangoes. Specifically Julie mangoes. Okay, Julie mangoes. Um, what kind of and... mangoes are those? Are those the... I'm the... Diff- well, I haven't seen them out here in, in, in the Sobeys. Are those them, the but, orange um, ones? The orange back ones, at like home, they... they like they like they they actually turn like yellow or kind of reddish back home. Okay. Okay, I think I think I I I've seen those not a lot but a couple times. Um, and what is your favorite vegetable? Vegetable, woo. Well, potato can be used to make vodka, so I would probably say that. Right now. <laughs> okay. Um, and do you have a pet? Do you have a pet? No. Um, my daughter has 
a pet turtle, well, two pet turtles now, one died. I'm not saying it's my fault, but I'm not saying it's not my fault. But, <laughs> um, yeah, she has two pet turtles. Okay. Um, and what's your favorite book? Of all time? Yeah. Sure. The Bible. Okay. A good choice. Mm -hmm. um, and what's your favorite movie or documentary? Ooh, favorite movie. I love them. I love them. I love them Marvel movies. Like all of them, Avengers and Game and, and <laughs> I love all of them. Like, ooh, like I love all of them. Sorry. I just watched my first one in quarantine. Daddy hates them. He doesn't think that. <laughs> no, he doesn't. He, he hates them. Oh my days. No. <laughs> he doesn't hate them, but he like something with more um with a. Uh, a more like a more advanced like storyline and like plot. Wow, what is better than Black Panther in a small <laughs> city that nobody can go into, and then Captain America being frozen for how many years? Wow, I love the Marvel. I love Marvel. Sorry. Love yeah. <laughs> yeah, the 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 reason that I watched my first Marvel movie in quarantine was because I liked Tom Holland as a elf and onward. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, okay. Well, but that's... but I do like Spider Man and um and Wakanda. I think they're both of them are very cool and fun. Um and what genre of books do you like to read? Ooh, I don't really like to read books, you know, to be honest. Like at Earth. I don't. I have this one in front of me right now. I just started reading. Boom, can you see this one? Okay, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is Mandela and it's very interesting. So many things. Oh, e Whoa. interesting, interesting. Okay. Um, and what it would be your five-a-side dream team? And you can put yourself in there, too? Well, of course I'm in there. Of course I'm in there. <laughs> <laughs> five-a-side dream team. So four other players. Paolo Maldini. Woo! Paolo Mandi Maldini. Wow. Maldini. One of the greatest. There. Oh, my days. Um, Ronaldinho. Ronaldinho. Okay. Steven Gerrard. Okay. And one more for me. Wow. Dwight York. Who? Pardon? Dwight York. Oh, Dwight York. Yeah. He's he's an attacker, right? Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, yep. okay. So you have uh Paolo Maldini is, you have you in goal, Paolo Maldini is a defender, Steven Gerrard, um, and Ronaldinho in the midfield, and then Dwight York. Okay, yes. that's a good team. Yes. And then, what one thing that you learned in soccer that has helped you outside of soccer? Ooh, respect. Respect. Okay. Yeah. That's a good one. Um, and who and who do you support, like a soccer team? Juventus. You, oh, okay, Juventus. I wasn't yes. sure if you choose like a like um, a team from back home that you um, were on before, or was it still going to be Juventus? Juventus, or, or, let's, or, or we could also say the HFX Wanderers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and do you have a nickname? No. Okay. Um, what is one soccer player, past or present, that you'd like to grab a lunch with? Ooh. That's a good question. Who I'd like to grab lunch with? And Gigi Buffon. Gigi mm. Buffon, okay. Yeah. He, would you learn all of his secrets? I would definitely ask him. <laughs> I don't know if he speaks English. Okay, and, and what is one superpower that you would like to have? One what? Superpower? Yeah, superpower. Whoa, where are these questions coming from? <laughs> wow. A superpower I'd like to have. Um... I would like to be able to go back in time, the tr time travel. Oh, time travel. That is a cool yeah, one. Yeah, some things I think you have to experience more than once, you know? Yeah, and also that uh, could really come in um, in handy if, you, it, like, if you're like if playing goal and you don't want to let in a goal. <laughs> no, not to change anything <laughs> really, you know, but just to experience some things twice. So I can remember our home opener against Forge last year. I yeah. would love to go back to that just to get that experience of it because that was, to me, that was the start of something magical, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That... Yeah, I was definitely happy to be a part of that. 
Yeah, that was a super fun moment. Um, yeah. And is there a quote that you live by or really like? That I live by? Do you know the word Kaizen? Yes, what? that's one of my favorites. What? Yep. yep, Kaizen. Kaizen. Well, he doesn't know it, so why don't, yeah. you, why don't you say what that's that your homework to you. tonight. That's your homework tonight, big man. Go home. Google the word Kaizen and, and okay. figure out what it means. Now I just I just have to ask, how did you where where did you come across that? In, like in I really don't terms, know. Um, I I really can't remember. Like like some years back, I seen it. Somebody told me about it. Oh, I read it in a book or something. I was like, this is this is me. Like I, I just want to constantly just be improving and you know. And I was yeah. like, yeah, constantly. I can better. see that. Yeah. I can yeah. see okay. that. You know, with with how our you know, some of your answers that you've given. So that's, yeah. that's cool. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. And what genre of music do you like? Soca music. That's Trinidad and Tobago all the way. S-O-C-A, soca music. I love it. I love it. Okay. It's the best. So that means you can dance then? Well, I, 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 I love it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Okay. I love it. Um, and I'm, I'm not sure if you have one because... So, some players don't. Um, but what is your favorite board game? Scrabble. Scrabble. Okay, that's a fun one. Yeah, I only lost one Scrabble game in my life. One. One. Just really? one. Wow. <laughs> Just one. Wow. Just one. Wow. <laughs> well, if you ever, if well, if you ever have Scrabble on you and we meet and you have some time, I'll like to challenge you. I am definitely going to go to the mall tomorrow and just buy Scrabble and just keep it in my bag just in case we meet. I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, and what's your favorite pastime? Favorite pastime? Oh, that's a good question. Just, I don't know, just just spending time by myself and, and, and doing some introspection, I guess. Okay, and then this is my last round of fire question for you, then I'll be closing up question. Okay, so three words to define you. To define me, funny. Okay. Um, unpredictable. <laughs> and respectful. Yeah, I, I see those in you, especially uh, respectable, um, I mean, respectful and um, funny. I definitely see those. And, <laughs> and I, I don't think I've seen too much of your unpredictable side, though. Yeah, you should ask. You don't want to see that side. <laughs> okay, that I'll side end. is crazy. Um, what are your goals for the future? Goals for the future? Um, I think... The, the major goal for me is just to constantly improve in every aspect of my life. And I really want to positively impact and influence everybody I come into contact with. Okay. You know, if, if I would have one goal, that would be it for me, just so that when I interact with people, I, 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 I give off some sort of positivity or I'm able to help them um, in a positive way. Yeah, that sounds like a good goal. Um, and thank you so much, Jan, for coming on. I really, we really appreciate it. Um, sorry, the rap fire questions went a bit over. The rap fire. <laughs> That's no problem. That's no problem. I'm the rap fire enjoyed. is my favorite, and I, um, I had a lot of questions in there. Um, but I love, I love your story, and I think it's so interesting with all the clubs that you've played with and all the experience you have. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was it was fun coming on here tonight. Um, as I say, this is probably the most in depth interview I have ever done. Ever. <laughs> <laughs> so well, we don't go, yeah, we don't go easy on people. Yeah, and... I like the, I like the questions. I really did. Um, I enjoyed it so much. And, and and as I said before, I just want to be able to to pass on whatever knowledge and little bits of information that I have in any way, so so that it can help anybody who's listening and and to help them to 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 progress in whatever they're trying to achieve. Yeah, and I just wanted to say your goals for the future when you answer that question, that's kind of the vibe I get off you. So I think you're doing a great job in in Thank you. Uh, Thank in, you. I appreciate it. You know, that. on that path. So Yeah, I, I get I get that too. <laughs> Um, well, thanks again for, for coming on and hopefully we'll see each other sometime in the near future. Um, and hopefully this year, like in 2021, the season 2021, we'll see each other 
um, at the Wanderers grounds. I hope that. I hope that so much. Oh my god. Yeah, days. with all of our yeah, with all of our fans, the ball boys, the blue smoke. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the players and the coaches so, and definitely. everybody. Definitely. <laughs> definitely. So. Well, thank you so much, Jim, for coming on. We really appreciate it. Thanks for having me, guys. Thank you very much for having me. Thank yeah. you. Okay, okay see have a good one. You. All right, bye. Yeah, see you. Bye. Bye.